the reality is for anyone listening, leads are on multiple websites. They are talking to multiple agents, like usually like four or five. Hello, welcome to episode 189 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by founder of Agent Launch, Eric Preston. With an expertise in lead generation and digital marketing, Eric discusses the importance of differentiating yourself in the real estate industry. Sharing strategies and techniques he has honed in with his own real estate business, he discusses shifts he has personally seen in the digital marketing space and why he believes niching down is your best bet. In addition, Eric shares his advice for using YouTube as a lead generation vehicle and way to build your credibility as a market expert. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Eric Preston. If you're interested in learning more about digital marketing and ways to optimize your lead generation, be sure to check out the episode description for links to Agent Launch and Eric's YouTube channel. Yeah, so really the way I like to get started is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, who you are and a a brief background on yourself. Sure, my name is Eric Preston. I'm a licensed agent, founder of Agent Launch. Um, so yeah, I started my journey in Vancouver, Canada, working for a real estate marketing agency, became an agent myself. Um, after doing some production, I ended up going back into the agency world by starting my own. And so, yeah, we help real estate agents with, um, lead generation online, creating like omnipresent, uh, lead generation and also using video to convert them and build trust with them and bring a more authentic approach to real estate lead generation and conversion, as opposed to like a typical spammy type of stuff that you a lot of times see online. We want to try to work and create real connections. So yeah, I I mean, I built our business from my suitcase as a digital nomad. Uh, We have a team of uh, 15 right now um, and I actually live in Portugal. So that's the long and the short of it. Yeah. So when, you know, when you were uh, coming to, you know, your ideas of, you know, this digital marketing and what you were, you know, what you were wanting to do that was different from everybody, um, was that something that, you know, as you really got into your real estate career, you saw that this is the way you can differentiate yourself from your competition? Yeah, well, how how we were doing it was, you know, I worked for this agency and I was kind of the Facebook ads guy. Like I actually got flown around North America to speak about Facebook ads. And um, so, yeah, I taught thousands and thousands of people how to run effective Facebook ads, essentially, partly because that's what that agency did at the time. Um, when I became an agent, I found Google ads worked better. Um, and so at the time, you know, this was, I don't know, five years ago now, there wasn't as many people doing Google. And so what happened was, you know, me and my partner, we started doing a bunch of sales from Google and then people at our office started asking us what we were doing. And so we started showing people and then they wanted us to do it for them. And then we had that turned into like a, um, you know, the agency that exists today more or less. And so I think Google is a good place because you have that search intent that you don't really get with Facebook. I mean, today we use both strategically together, but for many years we just did um, Google. And I think what would be relevant to talk about here is actually the, the, the dip that we experienced last year that I think a lot of agents did. So like this stuff we'd been doing for years on Google, all of a sudden stopped working last year. I shouldn't say it stopped working completely. It just stopped working as well. Right. And so I think what happened looking back is there just wasn't, it wasn't like the lead generation changed that much, but what happened was there wasn't as many things to sell. And so it didn't matter where you generated leads. There just wasn't as many transactions to be had. Right. I think someone shared with me, the number was there was less sales in the U S last year in 2023 than there was in 2008. Um, and I was like, whoa, okay, that makes a lot of sense. (laughs) So one thing we started doing to be strategic is 
um, targeting new construction, uh, mm. actually, because what we've, we started building custom landing pages for new construction and all of this stuff. And, and what I'm really getting at is like, you, you almost had to be a little more niche. And I think that's a way you can really stand out is just by being a little bit more niche with your marketing, it allows you to have a much more like impactful message when you actually reach out to people. So right now we're kind of doubling down on that and doing a lot more because for the simple reason that yes, the lead generation is, it, it's a more specific type of lead because they're searching for new homes. Um, but obviously like anything, you can generate new home leads and they can buy resale. You can generate resale leads and then they end up buying a new home. Um, so it's not a perfect like science of, of new construction, but new cons targeting people looking for new construction, it's just way easier to facilitate a deal right now. And so we're finding that to be something that's working like right now. Yeah. And then, you know, when it comes to, uh, those ad campaigns, I have to imagine that there's less competition when you niche down like that so that your ad is actually shown when somebody searches in your area for those specific things. And that that's getting your, you know, your contact information in your face out there or your landing pages. Uh, is that something that you, you know, really kind of found is that the, the competition was less, you know, when it came to those specific campaigns? Yeah, the competition's lower and the intent is higher. So if someone searches like homes for sale in Jacksonville, you know, you don't you have no idea what they're looking for, but that's how Google ads works. And I think it's really interesting because you can target continental United States for everyone who's looking for homes in Jacksonville. So they could be relocating from anywhere. Whereas Facebook's like targeting in a geographical area, right? I'm sure you know this, but just for the audience. <clears throat> and so it's interesting because if the more specific of the keyword you target, you know, usually the lower in the funnel that person is, but it's a delicate balance, right? You, you know, we have successful clients who are doing farm and ranch campaigns or like waterfront campaigns or like lakefront or, you know, new construction we're doing a lot of, but there has to be enough search volume for you to actually run a campaign on it. So it's like this delicate dance of being more specific to a point, you know what I mean? And sometimes that means combining things to get the lead volume that you actually want. Right. When you started noticing the, um, the changing trends in your campaigns, you know, I, I know a lot of times, even with stuff that we run, uh, sometimes we might just kind of pass it off to, oh, that was just a bad week or something. How do you start really kind of determining, okay, we need to pivot here. We need to start adapting to the different, the different market trends overall, not just what we're seeing in our, uh, specific campaigns. Yeah, well, I think we had kind of rose color glasses because things were really good for us for a few years, you know, like uh, COVID happened, everyone wanted to get online, we were already doing that. So that worked in our favor um, from a business sense. And then um, this was the first time where we had to really kind of look at what we were doing and see how we could kind of change it to according to where the market is, because uh, the things we'd been doing for years, just, it's not like they changed, but there's two things that actually happened. One was um, obviously things weren't selling as easily. So we needed to find something that was selling a little easier. That was new construction. The second thing was over automation. Mm -hmm. So what happened was in the age of AI and automation, we obviously were doing some of that and creating automated workflows for our clients on the back end and helping them stay organized. But, but what happened was I, I think people started to become a little more immune to that, like automated messaging. And so still there's so many people out there doing it. And Today, like to your point earlier, we we help focus more on how to use video strategically to like like crack people open a little bit more. Because the reality is, for anyone listening, leads are on multiple websites. They are talking to multiple agents, like usually like four or five. <laughs> like they're getting yeah. prospected. Like if they're on Zillow, Zillow's selling their information to four or five agents. If they're on Realtor, it's the same thing. They're on multiple agent websites. They're getting hit in a lot of different directions. Like, you know, why are they going to remember you? Why are they going to choose you? I think, as you said it, like, how, how do you be the chosen one to use a matrix <laughs> yeah. uh, joke? But like, it's true. Like you, and today we're using more for some people, YouTube videos, but some people like personalized, like bomb bomb videos mm -hmm. um, to just take it that little bit further where people say, okay, this person's really on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of want to uh, start really with that lead generation question, you know, there's a lot of people that it's either you go all in on doing the, you know, 
putting your marketing dollars behind the the Facebook ads and things like that and generating your own leads or there's a, the other camp that is all about, you know, buying the leads. So we're, I have to imagine with what you guys are doing, the generating your own leads is where you are most focused. Yeah. We're, we're a little anti the buying leads um, yeah. because we know from experience, if you build the system, right, you can. So our whole motto is like real estate lead generation, you own and control as opposed to, cause we get so many people, man, who, come to us from Zillow and they're like, Zillow just turned off the tap and I don't know what to do. And that's kind of not a good place to be in as a business owner, entrepreneur is having you be so tied to this one business that could just, that is actively trying to turn off the premier agent tap and move to flex and you flex is an invite only program. So it's usually in people's interest to build a system that they're in control of where they, they can turn up or down the tap as they wish. Right. And so we've kind of geared towards that, which is where, you know, our clients have full transparency and insight into the stuff we build for that reason. Um, but yeah, if you, if you do generate the, uh, leads well, and you do the lead generation well, I mean, we have clients who spend, you know, 30, $40,000 a month, so you can really turn it up. And that's, I'm talking $15 a lead. Like, so you're getting a lot of leads a month, but these are, these are people with 15 agents on their team. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more cost effective if you do it right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just the, the quality of that lead is going to be so much better. This is somebody that was actively searching, you know, for something that you were producing and they, they came to you rather than it just be this big, you know, net that you're casting out there and hope to catch that one, uh, mm -hmm. that one person that still may be even actively in the market in some cases. Yeah. And, and the other way I describe it, like we started implementing, you know, meta ads recently alongside of Google. And our approach now is to like pick a farm area and let's run ads on Google. Let's retarget them on Google and across Google displays network. Let's run ads on Facebook for the same area. Let's retarget those people on Facebook. Let's also do some in-person marketing. Like let's create some omnipresence. So people go out in person, they see you, they go online and they see you. And once they come into your like digital net, you know, it's hard for them to leave. And then you just become that like big space in their mind around real estate. And I always like this example, you know, when I was a kid, I remember this lady was always on the bus benches in my neighborhood. And then I saw her at a bar one day. I was like, Hey, you're, I, I can't even remember her name now, but this was many years ago. And I'm like, Hey, you're the whatever lady. And her name was just like synonymous with real estate for me. Yeah. And it's like, that's, what you want to create, but now we have the ability to do it so much in a, such a more advanced way, yeah. um, with the advertising tools we have. And one of the cool strategies we do is like, um, using door hangers and, and mail drops with QR codes that lead to like helpful videos. Like you sell a house instead of circle prospecting and just door knocking. What if you did door hangers that had a QR code that said, congratulations, your home just increased in value by $25,000. See how here, you know, like, yeah. like really creative stuff like that, um, I think is the way forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I really do think that, you know, with, uh, all the automation and things like that, having those re really, uh, personalized and those different things that are out there, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, just those videos that you can do that have somebody scan and it pops right up on their phone, you know, while it's not that one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know, at their door, you're still creating that one-on-one -on -one connection. hundred percent. And the, the, uh, the funny thing is, is we've been testing this live with our clients. Like when we launched this bomb bomb strategy, um, for a little while now, we've been workshopping it with our group. Um, and it's been really interesting what's come out of that. And the, the basic idea is like, if you've ever had a sales experience where, where you have a great conversation with someone and then they follow up with a video, that's really powerful. Hey, Michael, it was great chatting with you. Just want to summarize our conversation, let you know that I updated our save search, so on and so forth. But the first video you send them is really interesting because the first video should be so short. It's just like, yeah. hey, Michael, just wanted to let you know I'm a real person. Thanks for signing up my site on my site. I'm going to be giving you a call from a 604 area code in the next couple hours. Just wanted to let you know it's me. That's it. Just it doesn't have to be complicated, you know? Yeah, I really like that because that does, you know, a lot of times when you do fill out that landing page and you get that first, you know, email or text message like, oh, man, I just got hit with the bot. You know, here mm -hmm. it goes. And I really do. I, I really like that idea of just sending that that quick little video saying, hey, this is going to be a real person that you can be expecting to hear from here shortly. 
Yeah. And one of my clients just did this. He was in, uh, he's in Long Island and his day seven from a new lead text, uh, he said he's getting right now a 50% reply rate. And like, that's for anyone that's done online leads, that's really high. Um, but what he's doing is sending a meme over text. <laughs> so I'm like, it's these, it's these funny little simple things that, um, can really make you stand out. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the personalization is great when, um, you know, so going back to that, that idea of being the agent that people choose, um, you know, I think a lot of it also, we, you know, when they are talking to the multiple, uh, agents out there and kind of interviewing around, you want to be the person that is providing the most value up front and the most, you know, you know, educational pieces or whatever it is through your video content or everything else that you're sending. Yeah. I think people compl complicate it, but you just nailed it on the head. It's like lead with value and mm -hmm. think, think if you're as if you're in their shoes, right? What, it, what does this person want? What do they need right now? And in the early stages, they generally like Look, we spent eleven and a half million dollars on Google Ads. Um, we've been doing this a long time. We've worked with several hundreds of clients, and like, it's really, it's, it gets hard when you complicate it. But it's really simple. People care about what the value of their home is, and what else is out there, and what they can get for their money. At the end of the day, that's usually what they care about in the beginning. Um, so you want to cater to that by just adding value, like creative ways to increase the value of your home or like we get all of our clients to send out a deal of the week as part of their newsletter. So here's a great deal. This is why I love it, right? If you're looking at what they're searching at on your website, send them some information about that property. Like a great idea is if some, something has an HOA or, you know, there's information that they don't see on the surface that you think would be helpful. Just not asking them for it, just sending it to them. Hey, I noticed you're looking at this building. I've actually sold a few units in this building. I have some of the HOA docs. I just want to send them to you because there's certain restrictions you may not be aware of. They'd be like, whoa, this guy, Michael is really like really helping me here, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I think it's, it's just, just providing value is and teaching, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, with what you said, those very specific, um, pieces that you you're sending to people, uh, I think it's so important to actually be tracking the traffic sources and where people are visiting your pages and knowing exactly what traffic sources those, those folks are coming to. So you do have that ability to send off that very specific, um, you know, piece of value, you know, content that fits their need. No, a hundred percent. You're right. And, and that's why the IDX is so important. And I think a lot of agents don't necessarily, cause it took me a long time to appreciate that. Like, this is a really good conversion tool. The fact that we have a thing that loads all the properties, which a lot of most countries don't have automatically. And then our clients are able to use that and we're able to see what they're doing. Like that's a salesperson's dream. Like, you know, cause <laughs> we, we get this all the time. It's like, I sent my client three videos in a row, but they didn't reply to me. But what I noticed is they went back on my website and they did what I told them to do. So I'm like, I know they're watching it you know, I know they're paying attention, but they're just not ready to like engage me yet. Yeah. That's okay. People take different amounts of time. Right. Yeah. I think that's also, you know, that's a really, that brings up a really good point about, you know, when it comes to the creating of, um, whether it's video content or blog, whatever it is, uh, you know, understanding that it may not exactly lead to like that specific video may not lead to a specific sale or something, but the whole overall approach, what it's doing for, uh, your, your conversion rate. Totally. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, one of the, he's one of the higher ups at like market leader showcase, uh, that portfolio company. And he shared with me in 2018, he was doing Google ads. Um, and he generated about 150 leads. And I had a conversation with him a few weeks ago and he said he went, he went into MLS last year and he cross-referenced every one of the emails and names. And he found out out of those 150 people, 55% of them had transacted real estate at some point in the last five years. And I was blown away by that number because that was even a lot higher than I would have thought. But if you, if you give it a long enough time horizon, like people are interested in buying or selling and Google's a great way to get them early on. 
And one thing I love is, is with this niche marketing topic is like, you can really simplify and amplify your message by being niche. So let's take new construction for another example. Yeah. If you like are generating leads by targeting keywords that indicate someone's looking for a new home, and then you're literally driving them to a landing page where you're capturing their information, and then you can start sending them new homes. And then you have a newsletter that sends them new homes. Like your pick of the week is like new construction deals per se your messaging and your video content is all around buying new construction because it is a different process. Um, so it amp your message is amplified. And another example is we have this um, girl in Toronto in Canada uh, called the loft queen. And so niches are interesting because you can go like broad in terms of an area, but niche in a property type or niche in an area and broad in a property type. So Toronto is a huge city, obviously, but she just focuses on lofts, which I thought was really cool. And she branded herself that way. So if you're looking for a loft, like, you know, she's going to come up in a Google search, you know, yeah. um, and you just get a little more uh, like big fish, small pond kind of idea. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even, you know, just thinking about uh, the the video content ideas and like the the just the social media branding and everything that you can do around that when you do have a very focused uh, approach to, you know, the types of properties the very, you know, a very, uh, specific neighborhood, you can really build that whole thing out to become that expert. hundred percent. Yeah. And, uh, most people don't do it cause they think they're going to miss out. Okay. And the, the funniest thing about this, and I, I always like to point this out is most people are like, well, if I niche into lofts, like nobody's going to come to me for anything else. And the funny thing is people will come to you and say, Hey, I'm not looking for a loft, but I really like your content. Like, do you, would you help me buy a condo? I'm kind of looking over here and be like, of course, <laughs> like, like loft condo. Like it's not, it's not like I know nothing about those. It's the same idea. Um, but it just helps you stand out. Yeah. And then the other thing with that is, you know, if you're doing it long enough, that person's probably going to eventually sell that condo or that loft and, and buy something else. And if you are staying, you know, connected to them, you're going to be the one selling that place again. hundred percent. Yeah. That's where, that's where online leads, like they get a bad rap because to be frank, there's a lot of young people out there who are slapping these massive guarantees on their offers and they're all coached by generally one guy and not to mention names. Um, and they're running like some kind of Facebook ad program and they're not really solving the next problem, which is conversion. Um, like we've been around a while and we, you know, we try to solve all the problems in that funnel. And, and so basically it creates this like issue for agents where they don't really know what's legit or what's not. And sometimes they get into a bad program and they're just like, Oh, I tried that online leads suck or something like that. And everyone's been through a bad experience. Like I almost never bring on a client that's like, hasn't had some kind of bad experience with some kind of company somewhere. It's just like, that's real estate. Unfortunately, <laughs> they, there's going to be some not so good, um, people out there. And it's really hard as an agent to decipher through it all. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even with that, I think, you know, sometimes it, it can be so difficult to stick it out a little bit sometimes to, you know, to see yeah. what the real conversion rates is, because, you know, if, if you're brand new and you don't have a business behind you and, you know, you went all in, you might be up against it when it comes to the lack of money coming in. I a hundred percent. And that's why I, I don't even take on people who are like in a desperate spot because it is not a quick fix. It really isn't like, I'd be lying if I said, you know, we do have clients that sometimes do get that quick deal out of the gate, right? It, it can happen, but it's not the norm. Like you, you have to understand the leads take time to nurture. And it's, it's the, it's the 12 to 36 month window where you really start to see things, um, snowball because you start to get a lead you generated a year ago, all of a sudden, like one of my clients just messaged me last week. She said five of her PPC leads just out of nowhere became active on our website and she booked all five of them into an appointment. And I got to follow up with her about how that went, but that that's what happens. It's all of a sudden it's the spring market. People become mm -hmm. active, maybe interest rates go down. All of a sudden something changes. And that's why that example earlier of, of if you give it a long enough time horizon, um, that's where you start to see that snowball effect. 
Um, but it's usually not a quick fix. You know, it usually takes some, a few, at least a couple months, a few months usually to like start getting kind of deals done. And sometimes it can take longer. Um, like at the end of the day, you're, you're dealing with people and people are unpredictable. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. When it, um, you know, you kind of mentioned a little bit ago, uh, you know, the automation and the different tools that are out there to uh, kind of help you. Yeah, you know, there's so much out there now, whether it be the email senders or even the email, you know, the, the text writer, there's so much out there. Um, how do you balance the using it, but then losing some of your, uh, you know, the ability to have those personal conversations with people? Yeah, I, I think our new mantra this year is personalize your sales and automate your operations. Yeah. So personalize everything you do when you're selling, but then once you get them under contract, like you want to work on systematizing everything that happens after that. You know, whether you got someone to go get the signs in the ground, the staging done, like whatever the next step is for your buyer seller process, automate a lot of that. Like I, I think like we still build automated drip campaigns, but a lot of it is task based. So it's like, hey, send a quick text to this person, make a call to this person. We do have a few automated emails, but they're usually super short. Yeah. They don't sound like that. This was made in chat GPT or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's usually super short to the point because most people read, they read on their cell phone emails. Yeah. And if it's long, they just skip over it. So you got to be like, that's where I think people get lost is they, they focus too much on being like on brand mm -hmm. and then they end up sounding like everyone else. Yeah. That's where I think a lot of people get lost. And so I think it's okay to automate a little, but you have to have that personal touch for sales because it's a, it's a relationship business as we all know. Yeah, I know. I definitely agree with that. The idea of, you know, automating a lot of the tasks, but, uh, you know, using that time that it's given you to really connect and, and create those personal connections. And I mean, if some of those other things are taken care of, it really doesn't take much time at all to bang out a three sentence text or whatever it is. Totally. Um, and I think one thing we've learned over the years is texting is about getting a reply. Once you get that reply, you've opened them up to like, that's when you can call them. But a lot of people send too much info in a text. It's like in when you're coach, when we're coaching people on the phone, it's like, you want to ask, thoughtful, open-ended questions that get people to think not closed ended questions. Like how many beds and baths are you looking for? A great question is like, what is it about your current home that isn't quite working for you? That has you exploring other options. Like f you stop and you start thinking. So, but you wouldn't send that in a text. Um, you know, that's why sending like a funny meme or like, Hey, is this Charles, you know, like, just getting that first reply. So, so there's different, different strategies to really, um, as you know, to like crack people open, you got to kind of understand the platform. You also, the, there's a lot of nuance to it, right? Because if you're talking to someone who's a Gen Z, they're probably not going to answer their phone. If you're talking to someone who's, you know, a baby boomer, they probably prefer to be called. And it's just, then you got to like analyze your audience a little bit. I do want to ask you about the, um, you know, uh, video content creation and how to utilize platforms like YouTube to really start becoming that lead generation, you know, source for you when people are, uh, you know, maybe searching your area, whether, whether they're relocating or being, what, how are you using, um, or how are you coaching people to use YouTube to really kind of start propping them up within, you know, the search engines and things like that? Yeah, great question. So, I love YouTube. I mean, I've, um, you guys can check me out on YouTube, Eric Preston. Um, I have a channel with about 30,000 subscribers. So I've been, it's been a big part of my life, um, a big part of my business. Um, and so we integrated it into our program and we started coaching on it. And it's, it's a really interesting thing right now because, you know, two years ago, I didn't know many people doing it and now it's almost trendy. Like it's become almost trendy to do and a lot of people are doing it and it's gotten more competitive. Um, so I have a lot of different philosophies on this. Um, but if you want to create content that people are going to watch, just look at what people are searching for. 
And generally what people are searching for on YouTube is information about an area, generally. Pros and cons of living there, like, you know, and a lot of your audience ends up being um, people who are relocating there. And you're, you get to be that opportunity to be the first person who like teaches them. And that can be really powerful. And from the clients I have that are really good on YouTube and successful, and from my experience being successful with YouTube, there's no better lead because people will get on the phone with you and they'll say, look, I've watched so many of your videos. I feel like I know you and you're all, your job is almost to convince them to show them that you are who they think you are. And you're not like a, you don't have like a camera personality and then you're kind of weird otherwise. Um, so I, I love YouTube. I think it's a great conversion tool as well. You know, if you have videos on complex issues on complex things, it's great to send to people, right? Yeah. Hey, like I noticed you were asking about whatever issue it was. Um, your home's value. Here's a, here's a video I made on, you know, 12 ways you can imp- increase your home's value. Um, you send that in a text, it's like, likely they're going to watch it. And so the, the thing with YouTube though, is you have to be committed to it and you have to be, um, you have to do it over and over and over again to get good at it. And yeah. there's no other way. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I definitely have some clients who are like pretty good out of the gate and some that struggle a little more out of the gate, but nobody got good at YouTube right away. You can go to the first video I made. You can go to the first video of any YouTuber you probably can think of. And their first video and their last video, very different. Um, so I, I think it can be a great tool, but you got to be committed to it. And my philosophy on social media is pick one, t- one channel, maybe two, because the reality is, is you see other people who are successful on social and they're usually on multiple platforms, but that doesn't mean they use multiple platforms to get there. They usually used one, maybe two. And one of my clients said it best. YouTube is how she generates new eyeballs and Instagram is how she converts them. And I really like that because it's true. Instagram's a little more personal. YouTube's a little more informational. And so you really got to commit to it. Because one thing I've noticed from coaching hundreds of agents on YouTube is most of them give up. Even the ones that have been successful. Oftentimes, they're successful, they get busy, and then they stop. And it's that thing that always kind of ends up at the bottom of the to-do list because it isn't necessary. Um, So that's kind of my long answer if you will yeah no i definitely and a lot of people that i talk to also about it it, they'll get started and you're right the same thing you know all of a sudden they will get you know a couple leads from it or and then they just get busy and they think oh well it's working i can i can put a pause on it for now but that's one of those platforms you have to be consistently you know adding you know to your channels and adding good quality content to your channels um you know for it to build on itself uh but you know, when it comes to those ideas, like you said, the, the, on the YouTube, you know, for some of the, just the, the ideas to create your content around, you know, I just think it's one of the, like, I could write out a whole list of videos that as if I were sitting next to somebody, giving them a tour of our area Mm -hmm. where we're going to look at houses and each one of those, you know, topics or questions that pops up that they might be asking, there's a whole, you know, video that I can create. A hundred percent. And your audience is your best source of ideas. What are they asking right now? Make that content. Um, But if I could summarize it, it would be become an ambassador of your area. Right. And, you know, we have a, in our community, we have a script doc of like 18 scripts you can make. Um, Anything from the pros and cons of living in your city to one I love is what does $1 million get you in Chicago today? And then you can go through like 750, 1 million, 1.25 or whatever price points make sense for your market. But like showing people what they can actually get by showing them what's on the market and what's sold. Um, Market update. That's, that's the kind of market update I like, not just like September market update. Um, You can also give out, you know, tips and tricks on how to improve the value of their home. You know, first time buyer videos are good. Um, teaching them the process. So there's lots you can do, but you know, I, I always say this, like how many reviews did you look at when you bought the last thing you bought on Amazon? Right. Probably, probably at least a few, right? right. How many reviews are people going to read before they choose their real estate agent to help them with the biggest thing they'll ever buy? They're going to read a lot. And that includes watching your videos, Right. 
like your YouTube channel will probably show up on Google. People will probably check you out. Um, so it, it, it does work as a lead generation tool, but it can also work as a conversion tool because some people you look them up and like one thing we started doing in our program is like a, what we call a digital authority assessment. So it's like an hour call where we look at your entire social media and website and we basically tell you if there's broken links, there's no, your description needs to be improved or the naming convention needs to be more consistent or like, what are the gaps we can fill basically? Um, and there's a lot of gaps for most people, even, even a lot of successful people. Like, so I, I think digital presence in general should be cleaned up because people will look you up. People will watch your stuff. People will read your reviews. <laughs> so that stuff, that stuff's gotta be, I wouldn't glance over that, especially if you're doing online leads which is kind of what we've been talking about. Um, if, if you generate a lead online and you start calling them and emailing them and they, they're going to know your name and your brokerage mm -hmm. and who you are, and they're going to go Google you. Um, so I've had clients being like, nobody will answer me. And I'm like, well, let's, let's go do a deep dive on your, pr right. your profiles. And it's like, okay, well, we need to clean this up because this might be working against you. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, I just know like even, even doing this podcast, I will, um, look up different agents and sometimes, you know, their, their Zillow profile won't even have a picture on it or, you know, those things, those things come up and like you said, they might be wildly successful, but all of those different profiles that they have accounts with and different things, they're, they're very inconsistent or you, like you said, even no picture, no information. Um, just having that one consistent headshot and description, you know, can really, uh, make a big difference. Totally. Um, and just model after people who are doing it well, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, just, um, model after those who, who you look up to in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell me a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about your, you know, your program and, you know, uh, how clients get involved with you guys and what, what you can do, uh, for your clients. Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone's interested at any point, they can go to agentlaunch.com. You can book a call with us. Um, it'll, it could even be with me, um, or my, other sales guy on my team, but essentially, um, our program is called Omni and the idea is to build an omnipresent lead generation strategy online. So it's very done for you. So the first step is that digital authority assessment. Um, and then we build out your ad strategy on Google, Facebook, Instagram, retargeting the whole shebang. Um, usually with a more narrow focus, at least at first. So if we're going to do new construction, like, Hey, let's go really go all in on that. For a lot of people, we do new construction and resale or uh, resale, and then we have some kind of niche we explore as well. Um, we also build their conversion system. So um, we'll work in a variety of CRMs, but most of our clients are on Fallout Boss. But we build up the pipeline stages, pipeline automations, text, email scripts, and ta the task-based workflow that kind of keeps you accountable. Um, and then we also have a weekly coaching calendar. So one week, me and my team coach on video marketing, the following week, uh, two of our more successful clients, one's the fastest growing team in Canada right now. Um, they coach on conversion sales, systemizing that process. So we try to cover the spectrum of like lead gen conversion, et cetera. The, the thing that's unique about us is we build assets in our clients' businesses that they own and control. So we're not like building them in ours and renting them back to the agent, like pretty much every agency like Zillow, right. they're just selling leads or most even marketing agencies are just kind of doing the lead gen and you don't have any access or insight into the ad accounts or what's going on where we give kind of full access and control into that. So at the end of the term with us, you can self-manage and we'll teach you how to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with us today. You know, lead generation and conversion is one of those conversations that can really last, you know, hours and hours and really kind of <laughs> dovetail into a whole bunch of different uh, places. But again, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us today. It's been a pleasure, Michael. I hope uh, the audience got some value from it. I want to thank Eric for joining us today, and I'm completely bought in on the idea of niching down with digital marketing to target a specific audience while building your credibility in your market with content creation. Remember, check out the episode description for links to Agent Launch and Eric's YouTube channel. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message of feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. 
Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.